thirst for knowledge cannot be quenched. Hey guys, what's going on? 5869 casting here, and today I'm bringing you the first episode of my learning series. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about something that I see pretty often. I'm often on the uh, Learn Dota 2 subreddit, and one of the major questions is people want to get better at Dota, and people want to expand their hero pool. And I think these two things are, are very linked together. Um, and usually... The first thing somebody will say is, if you want to expand your hero pool, is random. And that's great. Yes, if you can random uh, do that, that'll give you the widest you know, range of learning heroes. You'll, you'll learn different cooldowns and what have you, whatever. That's not what we're dealing with today because some people don't like randoming. You know, they're, they're scared they're going to get Invoker or, or Meepo or uh, even an Earth Spirit, something like that. Like these higher skill cap heroes that uh, they're afraid of playing. Um, and there's no problem with that. If you don't want to random, you don't have to. Um, what I've kind of devised is called the rule of 10. And that, this is the way I think you can kind of best uh, learn the game and expand your hero pool. Uh, and it seems to be the easiest to me. So basically what the rule of 10 is, is that you want to pick three from each category, three heroes from each category. You want to pick three supports, three carries, and then three safe lane, or excuse me, three solo lane heroes. Um, and what this will do for you is that Usually around three seems like the magic number for me. You know, you can learn an early game hero, you can learn a mid game hero, and you can learn a late game hero. And once you learn, you know, these three types of heroes, um, you can kind of apply it to any hero. Um, now, what I mean by this is, you know, if you know how to play an early game support with the rotations and, and what have you, you can play pretty well every early game support because they, they all play similar, you know. Maybe they don't have the same spells, but they all kind of work in the same way. So we'll start with support. So the early game support I have here is Crystal Maiden. And Crystal Maiden is good at pressuring the lane. She's good early game support. She's got some pretty high damage spells early on. Um, but she doesn't scale well into the late game. You know, she's still pretty effective mid game, especially since uh, we're in 6.84 now and they, they buffed her alt and made it on like a 90 second cooldown, which is huge. Uh, but she's a fantastic early game support. She can even move into the jungle if she's having an easy lane or if her carry's having an easy lane and she can farm up that way. Um, and then that'll give you a good idea of how to play an early game support, you know, how to roam, how to, you know, zone out the offlane hero, um, things like that. And then we can move into somebody like a Skywrath, and the Skywrath is going to teach you um, a lot more mid-game supporting and, and rotating, things like that. You know, he's pretty good at early game. He's good at zoning out the hero with the arcane bolt and kind of sitting at the edge there, but he's also very scary mid-game. He's got a lot of magical burst damage with his ultimate. He can roam around. He's got huge initiation range with his slow. Um... So he's really good at controlling the mid game. You know, he's got a silence, which is really hard to deal with for some heroes. Uh, and this will give you a good idea of how to control mid game fights, how to roam around in the mid game, you know, smoking up, as well as, you know, still zoning out uh, the offlaner early, which is always really important. And then we can move into somebody like an Enigma, who is like a late game jungle hero. And he's, he's good in the early game. He can pressure, you know, sometimes he'll come up for a gank, what have you. But he really shines in the mid game and the late game. You know, he's really good at these black holes that can turn a fight or even just the, the pressure of a black hole is absolutely huge, you know. So um, if the Enigma's off the map, people are always scared, you know, is the Enigma farming the jungle or is he sitting outside those trees, you know, ready to blink in and black hole two or three of us. And that'll give you a good idea of how to play this late game hero, you know, how to get this late game style, getting more farm than maybe you'd be used to on a hard support like a Crystal Maiden or a Skywrath and, and he'll teach you, you know, how to maybe smoke up so you can get a black hole without the enemy team seeing you, um, how to build into late game itemization, you know, getting something like a mech early on as well, which will help you guys push. Um, he's a pretty flexible support, but he, he scales very well into the late game. His ultimate goes through magic community, which is really important. Um, and just one black hole, like four or five man black hole, or even three or four black man black hole is like huge for turning in a, a late game fight. So just like that, you can learn so many different heroes because, uh, you know, there's different late game supports, there's different early game supports, but at least uh, you'll get a better idea. You know, you, instead of playing Enigma, maybe you'll play the Lena who knows she can't jungle. Um, but if she can get, you know, a little bit of farm for like an Aghanim Scepter, she turns and really scary in the late game, you know, 950 pure damage, even if the enemy carry has like 2000 HP later on in the game. That's still just about half of his HP from one ability from the Lena. Um, and it goes through magic community. So, you know, learning the Enigma will help you learn just how to play a late game support, you know, how to save up some money, how to farm up some money. You know, she can farm the jungle with her abilities later on. Um, 
So it's pretty helpful. Maybe you're already good at Crystal Maiden. So usually if you're good at any of the heroes I suggest here, you, you can swap them out for somebody else that, that you feel is similar. Um, I won't give you like every option for every hero that's similar because I think uh, it's good to learn that yourself. But maybe if you're good at Crystal Maiden and, and you want to get like better at microing, let's say, you can switch out the Crystal Maiden uh, for the Chen. Uh, Chen, a fantastic early game hero. He's good at pushing. He's good at really good at level one ganks if he gets the right creeps. Um, but he doesn't scale well into the late game. Even with the Aghanim Scepter, it's not all that useful. Um, but you can do something like that. So just keep that in mind. You can always switch out these heroes. I just feel these are all the easiest heroes, in my opinion, or, or the best to kind of learn. Uh, but we'll just move on to carries now. And, and Ursa is going to be the first carry, I think, that's, that's uh, really good because... He's an early game centric carry. Um, he's really good in lane. He's really good, you know, at, at getting these pickoffs, getting that early Roshan, giving your team an advantage early on, uh, getting a blink dagger and just pressuring so many lanes. And he, you know, he's not the best at farming. He doesn't have any flash farming abilities like the Glaives from the Luna or the Split Shot from the Medusa, but he's really good at controlling that early game and pressuring the enemy team. Um, and that's that's important. That's a carry you need to learn. It's still a carry just because, you know, it, it doesn't get six slotted by whatever, 40 minutes in, which, I mean, you can still do as an Ursa, but, I mean, he's not uh, the greatest late-game carry, but early to mid-game, he's just so scary and so hard to deal with, especially uh, in 6.84 with his new ultimate that reduces damage by 80%. Uh, that's huge in the early and mid-game because heroes aren't dealing all that much damage just yet, and if you're reducing uh, already little amounts of damage, it's, it's just so hard to deal with. And then we can move into somebody like a Luna. So Luna, pretty good early game. You know, Lucent Beam, pretty good at, at helping your, your supports get a kill or securing a kill, something like that. And then the Solar Eclipse mid-game, once you have a BKB, your Lucent Beam and your Solar Eclipse are so scary. They're so hard to deal with in these mid-game team fights. And then even late game, she, she's pretty good at late game. You know, Solar Eclipse maybe not the best because it doesn't go through magic immunity later on. Um, but you've got your Glaives, and once you're dealing so much damage, your Glaives are bouncing to maybe three four heroes even, and, and you're dealing so much damage with Glaives, and you're, and you're able to push in racks so quickly because your Glaives are bouncing, and it's hard to push into that, and um, so she scales pretty well um, throughout each, you know, she's not a master of early game, she's she's pretty good at mid game, but she's also not a master at mid game, or excuse me, at late game, but she's just really good at everything, and then you can move into somebody like a Medusa, who early game, she's not all too effective, you know, maybe she'll throw out a Mystic Snake, or, you know, at level 6, her ultimate's fairly good, but really, she shines in, in the late game, and, you know, the end of the mid game, really, when she's got all that farm, and she's got split shot dealing damage to, you know, four or five heroes, what have you, um, and she's just outputting so much damage, and it's hard to push into her, and she's tanky with the mana shield, because, you know, she's got a Scotty, she's got, whatever, a Heart, a, a Daedalus, what have you, um, she's just so effective in the late game, and this will teach you, you know, how to farm, how to make the most use of the space that your team's giving you. You know, if they're all pressuring bot lane, go top lane, and then your team can try to defend bot a little bit, maybe. And as long as you're making use of your space, of your neutral camps, even your ancients, maybe uh, picking up a helm and stacking them, you know, there's there's so many ways you can bring Medusa into the late game. Um, and if you understand how to farm and how to make use of the space, you'll understand how to farm as as any hero. You know, as Anti-Mage, it's, it's a little bit different because, you know, Anti-Mage is maybe cutting creeps and he's using Battle Fury and he's, he's in the jungle a little bit more but it'll still give you an idea of how to make the most use of this space that you're given so medusa solid late game hero will help you learn you know how to play pa how to make use of that space um you know pa doesn't have a flash farming item or excuse me ability like the medusa does um, but she's still good she'll still teach you you know how to make space and how to enter team fights you know when it's the right time you know you want to be in the lane till as long as possible and then you enter that team fight to come and help clean up or, or to get a few kills um but you'll still get a good idea of how to play an early game carry, how to play a mid game carry, and then how to play a late game carry. And then we'll move off into the solo heroes. So, uh, like I said, it, it was the the rule of ten, and you pick three heroes for each. You know, you pick three supports, three carries, and three solo heroes, and you have one left over. Now, normally you could put that in whatever if you want to be a better carry. Add add the fourth hero to a carry, and, and just pick maybe a carry you like. Add the fourth hero to support, and pick the fourth hero you like. In this case, I've put it in the solo lane category because I think it's the most important. And honestly, there's so many different solo lane heroes. Um, in my case, I picked I think the four best. That'll, that'll teach you how to get better at, at any solo lane. Um, but we'll just start right now with the Night Stalker. So the Night Stalker, really good solo mid hero. Uh, he can pressure as early on as like four minutes in that first night time. 
Um, he's good at, at getting ganks and, you know, using his ultimate to limit the enemy vision, being off the map and pressuring the enemy carries, picking off supports that may be stacking or maybe in the jungle, something like that. Um, but he'll teach you how to be a tempo controller, just like the Ursa would, um, just like the, the Skyrath and the CM would. But he'll teach you how to do it as a mid roll. And then on the other side, we've got the Shadow Fiend. So the Shadow Fiend will teach you how to be, you know, a mid carry almost. He's really good at flash farming. Once he gets that level four, level five, and he's got a bottle, he can just raise, you know, neutral camps. He can raise the wave. Um, you know, he can pick up a Yule Scepter later on and, and pressure the map. You know, is he in the jungle, uh, perhaps farming up a stack, or is he, you know, right again outside the trees, waiting to Yules me and, and to ult me, and that's almost certainly a kill every time. So he'll teach you, you know, sometimes how to pressure depending on how you build him, but he'll also teach you how to farm, how to go into that late game, because he is a fantastic late game core. Um, he doesn't have to be running the safe lane, he can be running the mid lane, and he'll teach you, you know, uh, rune control and, and things like that, just, just as a normal mid lane hero who also scales. Um, and then you can move into the off lane, and you can pick up somebody like um, the Nature's Prophet, who is fairly good at maybe limiting the carry's farm, you know, dragging the creep wave to the towers so you can get as much as possible, or harassing with the treants it's a little bit of micro yeah um but he'll teach you you know how to stay in the lane for maybe get like two three levels and then just move into the jungle it's no problem people do it all the time you know you're gonna have to sack your off lane tower at some point it's usually the first one to go down but you just leave go into the jungle you pick up your midas and he'll teach you how to split push how to farm as an off lane carry um it's not all too often that you'll play an off lane core but if you do you're gonna play like a nature's prophet you're going to go, he'll play the three position, he'll farm the jungle, um, he'll try to make space, he'll push towers a little bit, um, and then after that you can try something different and go into like a centaur war runner. So the centaur, um, he's going to have a tougher time in the off lane. he's a melee carry, so um, you know he's going to have to run up to the wave to get a last hit if he wants to, and then you'll, you'll probably get zoned out by one or two supports depending on what the enemy team is running, and you know you can put some points in return, and you can you know understand how to play a little bit safe. Which is important about the mid lane heroes too, because both Shadow Fiend and Night Stalker, uh, they don't really have escapes, you know. So sure, you can play somebody like a Quap and a Puck, and you can you know dodge every gank because you've got a blink, and they don't you know stack their stuns perfectly. But uh, it's not cheating, but it's it's easier than if you're playing a Night Stalker or a Shadow Fiend. You know, you have to have the map awareness. You have to understand at, at where in this you know, lane, can you stand to be the safest, you know, do you have to play far back, is it okay to play close up, and, and that's important as well, because it's not just important to gank and things like that, it's also important to, you know, understand how not to die, because not dying in Dota is absolutely huge, um, anyways, we'll go back to the Centaur, who, um, you know, once you're level 6, maybe you'll, you'll say, hey, I'm level 6, okay, I've got my ultimate, let's go gank now, that's all you needed from your lane. You, you might have to stay in the lane longer than somebody like a Prophet or a Darkseer, um, who are kind of similar. You know, they'll, they'll push out the waves, uh, what have you. They'll split push a little bit. Um, but now you're Centaur, and, you know, you can just go. You can start getting that global presence with your ultimate. Um, you don't even have to be there, and you can always help your team get ganks, you know. They say, hey, Centaur, we need your ultimate. You just pop it, 5-2-2, move speed, and, and you're helping your team out already. You don't even have to be there. Or you can be there. You can use the ultimate, just run in, stomp a hero, double edge, you know, get a nice little kill like that, and then move up towards your blink dagger, and then once you've got the blink, you can help your team create space, um, you know, you, you've got the blink stomp, you can blink stomp two, three heroes, and that's huge, just as an offlane hero who, you know, at the beginning of the game had nothing, um, but now all of a sudden you've got a blink stomp, and, and you've got your ultimate, and you're pressuring all around the map, and you don't even have to be there, and it's really important, and yeah, sure, Prophet has the, the TP in, but that means he's got to be there, you know, perhaps it's a little bit risky for him to TP in, uh, maybe he should be split pushing instead, creating space that way, whereas your Centaur, he's creating space by fighting, you know, he's he's in these fights, he's getting, you know, two three-man stomps, or maybe two three-man double edges, and the ultimate's giving you damage, and, you know, you can run away, you can, you know, bait a team fight and then run away, and then all of a sudden your carry has so much space on the map because there's four heroes top, and the other one's a support somewhere on bot lane, not able to kill your carry, and uh, just things like this, and it'll it'll make you better at, as any off lane hero, you know, uh, maybe you, you, instead of Centaur, you want to play something like an off lane Windrunner, who, you know, she can get some farm, just use the, um, uh, use the power shot to get a little bit of farm from a distance, and after that, maybe get it, get your phase boots, like a blink dagger, and then immediately you just pressure. You can pressure towers with your ultimate. You can pressure heroes with that shackle shot. You can get, you know, two hero shackle shot is, is huge in a fight. Um, you know, you're not playing like the Prophet who should be split pushing and creating space that way, but you're joining these fights early on with your abilities. Um, 
instead of profit. Maybe you're going to play Darkseer who can, you know, just island shell a couple of creeps, leave the lane and, and go help somewhere else. And then the lane's pushing out and, and a couple of heroes, maybe one, two heroes have to rotate top lane or whatever lane to help uh, defend the tower. Um, you know, you can start pressuring the enemy jungle. You can play like instead of a prophet, a brood mother. Um, you can be up there. And you can contest the lane. Make sure the supports can't leave because then the, the, the carry is in a little bit of danger depending on who it is. And, you know, just these one or two heroes can can give you, you know, a good general idea on how to play so many different heroes because they're similar. They're not the same hero. They're similar enough um, that, you know, hey, you know, I'm Prophet now and, and I see that there's four heroes bottom. So I'll go push top or I'm, I'm Broodmother here and I, I see there's four heroes bottom so I can really pressure this top lane. Um, it's the same thing. They're, they're different heroes. You know, one's more global than the other or what have you. But uh, they're still very different heroes, but you get an idea of how to play all of them. So I, I hope this is pretty helpful to some of you guys trying to expand your hero pools or, or get a little bit better at Dota. Again, if, if you're already good at, you know, a Luna or an Ursa, you can always switch it out for another early game carry or mid game carry, what have you. Um, but definitely, definitely try to get at least three for each. You can put this fourth one in wherever you'd like. But I, I like to keep it in the solo laners because it's it's kind of the, the widest range of heroes that you can play. Um, you know, instead of a Night Stalker, maybe you play a Storm Spirit who's good at ganking early on, good at ganking late, uh, stuff like that. But anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this. If you want to stick around to the end of the video, I have a little bit more information. It's like 30 seconds long. won't even take that much time. Uh, but my other series you can check out. I plan on doing a lot more learning series. Uh, I plan on, you know, helping people play Invoker and Meepo, two heroes that, that people seem to be scared of. But, you know, they're actually really easy once you get a few key things. I plan on, you know, helping people with item efficiency, farming efficiency, things like that. So if you want, subscribe, stick around for all those. It'll get you a lot better at your Dota game. If you're looking to get up from 2K to 3K or 3K to 4K, I can definitely help you out with that. Um, but please do check out some of my other videos, and I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks a lot, guys. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the video, hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to check out some of my other videos, I have my series from lane to lane where I just cast some everyday pubs that you guys send me. I also do some more professional pubs like uh, games from Koikva, Miracle, whoever I can get my hands on from Dota Buff. I have a learning series as well, so feel free to check that out. There's some more info in the description as well as some videos linked in the annotations at the end here. Thanks a lot.